What's up, YouTube? It's Amazing Brand DJ here, and welcome back to another video on the channel. Now, today, tonight, whenever you are watching this video, I have another news type video for you all because I have a couple things I want to cover slash address, and obviously you've seen the title and the thumbnail at this point, so you know it is on some FNAF fan game news related to stuff uh, on, you know, related to stuff in the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative or around the Fazbear Fanverse Initiative. So, without further ado, let's just dive right into it without making this intro any longer and get on with what we have to address. So, starting off, there is a brand new post on the FACAF for uh, Game Jolt page that I want to read through, but I also feel like I should cover this again real quick because I kind of addressed this in a vlog stream a few months or so ago at this point, so... It might be better if I just kind of cover this again real quick in a in this update video, news video, so you have it all in one place so you're not diving through a vlog stream to find me talk about this. So, yeah. We have some screenshots here, which we'll take a peek at. We have the original video, which I have taken a look at in thorough depth and whatnot. So, I might link that video at the end of the stream. At the, not the end of the stream, but at the end of the video in the, you know, <clears throat> end card. So... Without further ado, let's re I'm going to reread through this, and then we're going to address the new post, and then I have another thing, another topic we'll talk about. So, yeah. Welcome to the devlog page for this game. For the game no one asked for, out loud, but secretly wished for without really knowing. What the heck is this? This is the game. Put down your silly horror games and join Candy and his twin sister Cindy on this brand new adventure. A spiritual, a a spiritual English, a spiritual successor to Candy's Adventure, a popular mini game from the hit horror experience Five Nights at Candy's Three. That sounds sweet, but what is, uh, but what is it about? Basically, there is, huh? What? Wait, huh? Wait, what's going on below? Down? Yeah, what's going on below here? What the? Okay, so basically, Candy has somehow left a ton of fur balls everywhere, and even in this description, like actual balls of fur, absolutely, absolutely every, everywhere. It's a huge mess, and he has to clean it up. Trek through the grassy lands of sweet hills, venture into dark caverns, and uncover epic loot to help you on your way. Who knows? Maybe you'll even have to go further outside the territory of sweet hills, where cat paws seldom travel. Use your powerful claws to break blocks and defeat enemies, maybe even socialize with a few other an animal characters along the way. You know, see if they need help with anything. That's the hero's way. Collect coins, loot, most importantly, fur balls. What about for Cat 4? Shh. This game is not a replacement nor a weird joke front for the real deal, which is known thus far as for Cat 4. This is its own game. Think of it like the Cat, uh, FNAF World of the Cat series. So that's the description of the Game Jolt page. And again, there's screenshots here. There's the trailer, which, like I said, we've already looked at in depth in a different video. This first one here has Candy jumping in midair, which I assume is midair, with the dog on a bridge. There's a breakable block, trees, one fur ball, no gold or no coins, and five hearts. This was something that was in the actual video that we've I've already looked at, but it's just it's just Candy's dialogue box saying that sounds like a bigger problem for everyone but me. In their house, in the house that Candy and Cindy have, here we have Cindy jumping in the forest type area in a forest type area where it looks like there's collectibles, maybe gold on these tree stumps. There's a little dog enemy right here, and looks like in front of a cave entrance where there's like there's like I don't know, roots up here maybe. I'll say a forest type thing, zero fur balls, and you know, five hearts still. So there's five hearts, three fur balls, no gold. Candy's outside of what looks like a like a neighborhood, like there's houses here. You got a house right here with a reddish brown like roof tiling. We have a bluish house or like bluish tiling for this roofing over here. And it's just candy outside of it, and there's a mailbox and whatnot, so that's just that. And then finally we have here we have Five hearts again, no fur, no gold. Candy looks like he's on some sort of rope or vine, maybe, per se. And obviously, he probably has to grab on, jump on the other ropes, perhaps, to progress. There's water down below. Again, we look like we're in some sort of cave system, like we saw in one of, in one of the previous images. So, yeah. That's everything on the game, 
on the uh, Gameville page besides a couple posts, which I'll reread through the posts that I talked about on the vlog stream where I did this, and then we'll read the brand new one. So here it is. Well, the dev vlog is here. This is where I plan on updating you all on, on the game since that's something I sort of sense might be missing. So basically, progress has been good on Fakafur so far. I've managed to surprise myself time and time again with the amount of clever mechanics and interactive elements that this game and its levels have to offer. Now when I say levels, I don't mean Super Mario Bros. 3 type of levels that are short, linear, and can be selected from a world map of sorts. Nah, nah, this game this world is more, is more cohesive than that. It's all one big level with different areas and sections. I haven't been able to share much about the game besides the teaser trailer, but I will try from now on to give updates when I can. I hope I'm hoping to be able to finish this game soon so I can get out get on with the rest of the Fakas series, which I'm also still working on still. Which I'm also working on still. I know it may seem weird for me to start an entirely new pro game an entirely new game when I'm appear to be knee deep in projects, but honestly apart from feeling like I don't have all the time I want slash need, this is how I want things. It's good to be able to shift between projects now and then to avoid burnout, for example. But it also allows me to return to a project with new eyes, which helps me avoid tunnel vision, especially since I'm a solo developer on my games, so I can develop major tunnel vision on every aspect of the games. But, but anyways, this is the this is my introductory post, uh, devlog post for Fakafur will finish will be finished eventually, and afterwards so will Fakafur along with the port slash updates of the Fakat trilogy. I'm sorry, I'm truly sorry for keeping you all waiting all this time, but you'll have to trust me to deliver on my projects, Emil. So yeah, that's the stuff I addressed previously in a vlog stream, but I feel like I might as well recover it here so it's in a fresh video. So yeah, that's everything that's on the game built page. For as of now, but now there is an update from Seven Days. <clears throat> there's an up. There's a new post called "Update Enemies," which released seven days ago at this point. So let's check it out. Updates, enemies. I'm going to show off a few enemies, some of which are going to reappear from Kenny's Adventure in Fakathri, but most important, but most of which will make their debut in Fakathri. First off, Kenny's Adventure will was of course filled to the brim with original and memorable memorable enemies. Sadly. Only a few can make it to Fakat first, so with that, welcome back to Dog and Big Dog. Now, I know these guys need more orig original enemy titles, and I'm working on that. I'm thinking Hench Dog for the little guy. But these are far from the only dogs to join the epic roster of en evil enemies in this game. For example, let's take let's have a look at the new Corgi, Corgi yeah, crew. These guys are more, may look adorable, but they're also adorably deadly. Their long bodies make them larger targets as usual, but on the, but the, that surface area is equally used to deal you damage. Additionally, these guys can not only be fed in either horizontal or vertical poses, but they but in various and ver yeah, variety of different lengths as well. Good luck on jumping over these guys. You may have spotted this enemy in one of the screenshots on the game page already. This little guy looks innocent, may look innocent, but and, fra and frail. But you better not get on on its bad side. This ungodly creature known as Chihuahua, as a Chihuahua, is yeah, <coughs> as a Chihuahua, and it it and if you as much touch it, touch yeah, touch one of them, it will. Decide the rest of its life to un, yeah, <clears throat> to undefy your life from existence. I'm kidding around. This thing will ignore. Uh, will ignore. This thing will ignore its default wandering behavior and hunt you down faster. Although. That's all from the canine de canine department. This game features a handful of other in endearing and, and dangerous enemies. Have a look at a at the fly, Hemingway, and fly fish. The uh, two the first two the two first ones are uh, a real enemy with different flight flight patterns. Hem Heronway may even also be able to shoot eggs with in your face. The fly fish represents or replaces the mech dogs from Candy's Adventure as the game defaults 
aquatic enemies. Yeah, default defaults aquatic enemies. Now basically this is your friend family friendly plat this is a this is a family friendly platformer. It is somewhat expi expected that a few variants of these guys may appear with slight different patterns and abilities, who knows. But wait, there's more. All ga all games and I mean literally 100% of every every game in existence, even Pong has boss fights. Otherwise, what's what's to stand in the way of players breezing through the game? That this marks the introdu introduction of the game's first-ish boss, Big Butch. Now, this is a worthy opponent. This guy is like a miniature version of the boss dog himself, albeit not as high ranking. Stands at a height three times that of Candy and Sydney. They might just be able to jump over him with pre with precision to get a better attack angle before get getting wise. And believe me, once you get once you're trapped in the room with this boss, you really want to be good. You want to get good. You want to get good jumps at him over over. Yeah, get get good at jumping over him. That's all the updates. I'm afraid I'm posting about other another general update on on my profile with context on on the unfortunately unfortunately slow development of the cast series as a whole. So yeah, we got. I know I kind of butchered some of the reading, but yeah, we are getting some new enemies and returning enemies. So we have Dog and Big Dog returning from Candy's Adventure on from Five of Candy's Three. But we also had the Corgi Crew, where we had these long dogs that are actually gonna. Obviously, besides being horizontal and vertical, we they will be in different lengths. So getting around these guys is probably going to be a little tough. Then there's obviously the Chihuahua, which seems like it's going to be an interesting enemy to face off against. Because I feel like these might be your type of the, these these might be the type of enemies that kind of follow you around if you get if you get in like close proximity of them. So we'll have to wait and see. And we you know the fly fish. Henway and whatnot. I'm sure these are all gonna be interesting fish type enemies. Obviously, they are also gonna be fly. They also are like airborne enemies. So it's kind of interesting to see how these guys come into play. That literally is like a fish that is designed to look like a fly. That's uh, like a chicken, and then we have like a, we have a goldfish type thing, and then we have what is basically like a boss, big butch. Of uh, Kenny's uh, for cat fur, and you have you have to be very good at jumping over him, and if you you know if you're when you're trapped once you're trapped in the room with the boss, so I I think each of these enemies are gonna have di unique ways you're gonna have to defeat them. I feel like these guys probably won't be too bad since again they are returning enemies, so. If you played Candy's Adventure in Fakat 3, you'll probably know how to handle these guys. But again, with the with the Corgi crew, which you have to like, you have to like again, depending on what how their length and how you know long and tall they are, you'll have to fit, you'll have to probably plan your attack on them. Again, Chihuahua, you'll probably have to uh, avoid them, you know, being in the same, you know, in their line of sight or something like that. And the flying enemies, you probably need to have to go under them, or maybe try and deal damage to them. I'm not 100% sure. I'm just thinking about, you know, platformer-type enemies where, you know, what might work and what might not. And then, obviously, we have a look at a boss character, so. <clears throat> so, this, this is cool. Seeing some of the enemies that are going to be in Fakafur... Again, we all there. We have we have the dog-based enemies, but we also have again these flying fish, the fly fish, heronway, henway. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see these guys in action. So that's all the news that we have for ca for for calf fur. So that's fun. And something else I want to address in this video is FNAF Plus because I obviously. You guys may remember I did like a whole stream back in like August of last year where I covered everything post uh, like that came up to the release of the Steam page and since then there was a like a teaser image that was kind of released around Halloween that I you know I didn't really really talk about because it was a small post but I figured I would bring it up here and then Fiznom the creator of FNAF Plus 
or the creator behind FNAF Plus, did a live stream, I think, back in December, too. And there were, there was, like, uh, it was a charity stream, so there was Milestone go Goals, and there is, like, there were some posters released, uh... Of FNAF, for, you know, in FNAF Plus, of you know, of FNAF Plus content is what I'm trying to say, and there's a lot. There's like we have Easter egg posters, we have you know, character posters. There was also this tr uh, FNAF Plus demo, which is actually just a troll thing that I might. I actually did download, and maybe I'll pl I'll just play it on the video. But yeah, seeing some of these posters is interesting because obviously we have stuff like the. What is the Celebrate poster with the band? So seeing the FNAF Plus variant of the Celebrate poster, that is fun. And seeing, again, seeing we get to see like full bodies of the FNAF Plus uh, characters on the Celebrate poster. So that is fun. And then, again, we have a poster for Frederick's tools and time pieces. And I think we have seen these clocks before in some of the other FNAF Plus content when I was going over my mega, like, call of checking everything FNAF Plus related. So it is interesting to see these, like, frog-based clocks and other probably trinkets that will be found around FNAF Plus. So that's fun. We got a helpy, a FNAF Plus helpy, like, uh, I'm assuming prize poster because we have this 2,000 T, which might be 2,000 tickets, possibly. So, it is interesting to see that Helpy is in the game, but it's more as, like, a prize character, per se. And we have seen Helpy also in, like, some of the posters and whatnot around the pizzeria, too. So, they might not just be a prize character, but in this poster, they are being represented as, like, a prize character. Because they're in, like, a gift box. Pro that probably represents 2,000 tickets and whatnot. So, yeah. Then we have a nod to Chipper and Sons with Lumber Bites with this poster in FNAF Plus, which probably, if I had to guess, this is probably an, either an Easter egg poster or this is something that maybe we can customize, because I know FNAF Plus is going to have some customizable, I think, stuff to the office, so maybe we can hang this up in the office, per se. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah. Then we have the posters of the main four that would be around the pizzeria. So we have Freddy's Let's Party poster. And Freddy's doing this uh, similar pose that he, ha he does in like the FNAF 1 trailer. And I think also similar to the pose he does on his actual FNAF 1 poster. So that is fun to look at. Nothing too crazy to take away from this. It is just FNAF plus Freddy on the left on, on a poster. We have uh, Bonnie's poster, which is Let's Rock, and we have what is banjo guitar uh, type, you know, instrument on, you know, in his poster with him. We also can see the curtain in the background. This is also probably taken as a. Sh this poster was probably taken with Bonnie on stage, thinking about it, because we have the wall and the curtain behind him. So that is interesting. So Let's Rock for Bonnie. FNAF Plus Bonnie. Chica, we have Let's Eat. Obviously, that's Chica's thing. But interesting enough, obviously, again, probably taken on stage is the sun behind Chica. But Chica also has the wonky eye in this. So I think this probably confirms that probably out of out of the four main animatronics that were in FNAF 1 that are coming back in FNAF Plus, Chica might be one of the most animatronics in disrepair besides maybe Foxy. So that is interesting to think about because Chica has a wonky eye here next to her regular eye in the poster, and you know, they they just they they didn't bother to fix Chica's eye for the poster, so that is something to think about. And Foxy, actually, we get to see him in working order, not in the way we saw him in the FNAF Plus uh, breaking and entering video, where his eyes are all glossed out and whatnot. But we have Foxy with his eye patch open. He's doing his iconic hook hand pose. He's got a vest here. Let's Play is on Foxy's poster, which is interesting. With him being Pirates, the Pirate Cove attraction. It is interesting that his poster says Let's Play. So that is interesting. And again, we get to see Foxy not with the glossy eyes. And I think if I scroll back, we have seen the full body of Foxy. Seeing him not as tattered as he is here. So that is interesting, to say the least. So, yeah. 
And then, like I said, there's a quote-unquote demo, which is the troll thing. So we're going to end the video with that. But, yeah, that's some of the recent... That's not recent, but this is some of the FNAF Plus news I haven't caught up on or talked about since I did a FNAF Plus Mega live stream. So I wanted to bring, mention it here alongside the updates to Fakafur. I will say this now before we move on to the, the little troll demo. If you guys want to see me cover any news on maybe Pop Goes Evergreen, because I know there, there's a lot I could do... I could possibly do a mega Pop Goes Evergreen deep dive like I did for FNAF Plus, but I don't know how long that would take me. And then I know there might be some, there there was some older stuff from a few months or a couple months or so ago for T Jock. So if you guys want to see me talk about that, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. But with that, with these two, you know, with all these posts and whatnot out of the way. I'm going to come over here to my FNAF fan game folder, and we're going to open up the FNAF Plus demo, which, like I said, it's a... This is something sent to Docco on his charity live streams, and this is definitely a troll, but I want to show it off, per se, and I'm going to probably mute the audio when we get to the troll part of the, of the demo, so, yeah, because I, I think it might be playing something copyrighted, so, yeah. But after this, this is gonna be the end of the video, so yeah. So here's the quote unquote FNAF Plus exclusive demo. We have new game with uh, FNAF Plus Freddy twitching out on the menu, similar to Freddy does in FNAF 1. We also have a sound effect for selecting. We have continue, which has Bonnie on the menu. So we get to see Bonnie kind of twitch out and whatnot. And Exit has Chica with... Chica act... I feel like everyone is animated. But we have Chica here with her jaw just hinged open. Just moving up and down besides just the typical twitching that all the other ones have. So that is something. So I'm going to hit new game for this exclusive demo. And we get to see the newspaper that we have already analyzed and talked about previously. And we see the Frederick's time clock here loading up to probably the start of the night but yeah once this is about once this is about to uh finish loading i'm gonna mute the audio so probably about now and we're just gonna uh, you're gonna just see what happens after this point but yeah, we get to see the newspaper, we get to see a menu, which I think has been confirmed to be a fake menu, but it was made for the demo. Nonetheless, so uh, we get to see a FNAF Plus mock-up menu. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an Among Us joke. And I realized maybe even if I did mute the audio through desktop, I realized it might have picked up through my microphone, but oh well, hopefully this little part doesn't get copyrighted. If not, well, this is just a small news video. It doesn't really need to be monetized anyways. So yeah, that is everything. That is the small FNAF Plus troll demo. We have looked at some recent posts, well, not kind of recent, but I'm finally checking out these posters that were released towards the end of last year as well this little fnaf halloween post my mouse is being finicky right now but yeah we talked about this and then we talked about the new update for facaf fur as well as just kind of recovering the game jolt page as a whole in this video so i hope you guys did enjoy i know i may have butchered reading out some of this and just kind of butchering my commentary a little bit but hope you guys have enjoyed nonetheless so if you have enjoyed do leave a like comment subscribe very much appreciated Hit the bell to be notified when I come back to talk about more FNAF like news related topics in the future on the channel. So yeah, that's updates on FNAF Fur, and that's just some FNAF Plus news I, I didn't talk about since I streamed a bunch of it back in August of 2022. So there's the video for you all. Hope you guys did enjoy. Again, let me know if you guys want to see me talk about Pop Goes Evergreen news in a giant mega live stream. Because there's probably there is definitely a lot of evergreen news. Because that because that evergreen gets a lot of weekly updates. So yeah, there would be a lot to read through there. And again, maybe even talk about the little bits that we have for the T Jock collection and whatnot. So let me know down in the comment section down below. 
that's everything for now. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you on the flip side. Check the links in the description. Go follow these pages if you want for yourself for updates on these FNAF projects and more. And until next time, again, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you on the flip side. And I'll see you all later for something else. Bye, everybody.